Hey everybody, welcome back. Today we're going to do GLA Justice League of America issue 97 by DC Comics and we continue the 10th Circle Saga. Um, I love this post by the way, it's very creepy, very cool. Uh, yeah, let's dive in. So, um, an old couple gets in an accident and there was something falling from the sky in the back and it's none other than Wonder Woman. She has been, well, half dead and she's been brought to the hospital. And the doctors say that she's in critical condition and that uh, she has spinal trauma, uh, could be, you know, results in paralysis, uh, damage to internal organs and uh, extreme loss of blood. And then uh, Superman yeah, knows that's, that's the attack that the 10th circle did to, onto her. Um, but he wonders why, why didn't he turn her into a vampire? Why didn't he kill her? Kill her? Uh, basically, I also love the shot of Batman. It's very simple, but this is what Batman for me looks like. I mean, Batman nowadays is more like armory, very bulky. Uh, I, I'm more of a Batman fan that is sleek, fast, strong, uh, agile, uh, instead of, you know, with all the armors, etc. I, I don't like a new, newer Batman when it comes to costume. But hey, that's me. Um, but then... Uh, um, Batman found something in the in the well costume of Diana, and uh, it's clearly that the Ten Circle is sending a message. And then out of nowhere, Amazons come to get Diana, and then uh, Green Lantern gets in her face. But Batman stops him because he says they are here on my accord uh, because uh, our medical, um, let's say, they don't have the equipment to uh, to save Diana, and Diana just gets out of bed, although she's critically wounded, which is a little bit weird. Um, and Batman says, well, you need to get in bed. You are in no condition to uh, to help. Um, we're switching to Castle Crucifer, and Crucifer is, I don't know, talking to his brethren, and he uh, he's boasting that the, the moment is near and that um, she they, he disposed of the Amazon that has the ancient scrolls that could hurt them. And he has also enslaved Superman, um, the world's greatest hero. Uh, again, still love this this rendition of Superman with the spit curl because you don't have that anymore. Anymore because, well, I, let's not go into that. But uh, and also the 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 the, fl the cape that flows on over his broad shoulders looks very very cool and imposing. Um, but then uh, the brethren says, "Why didn't you?" enslave uh, Superman and the Amazon. And uh, Crucifer is, is defiant and he says, well, how dare you question my judgment? But uh, his brethren is, uh, you know, don't fall for his, his hysterics and they want to teach him a lesson. And then he bows down and you see, we see also a shadow. So I'm not sure if it's the shadow of Crucifer or maybe that they are standing in front of him, but we don't see the real presence. Could be. Um, Crucifer bowing says Superman's blood is alien to consume it all, uh, all would be poison and the next one is a really cool one and the Amazon is of divine origin in her veins is not true blood at all and I love that sentence why because it's uh, it's clearly that the writers uh, have respect for the origin of Wonder Woman because a lot of people forgetting that Wonder Woman is has been made of clay. She's from clay. She's been created from clay. And and she has, yeah, the power and maybe the blood of the gods in her uh, somehow. Um, yeah, so um, that's great. Um, I wonder how many new people know that fact that she's made from clay. Uh, okay, moving on. So, um, yeah, a surprise. So we have Nachi here. Nachi wants to... Uh, how do you say escape from the f her faith from uh, maybe uh, no 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 let me uh, let me rephrase that she's been you know not on board with what Christopher is doing she sees from who he is now and wants to you know not only escape but also you know um, rescue some prisoners but she is very insecure and she doesn't know how to do that and then out of nowhere the Manitou Raven appears and I thought he was dead uh, so apparently he is not. But this is a, I don't know, spiritual manifestation or ghostly manifestation. Not sure. Uh, meanwhile, also, 
going back to the, well, I can call it the microverse. It's not the microverse, but uh, we see Adam. Uh, he is being rescued and these creatures here are uh, revering him as a very important person. And it seems there was a person before him millennia ago, um, I'm sorry, uh, generations ago. And that person left something for them uh, in this box. Um, and uh, they say this is our cherished possession or his because it's a he, whatever that person is that came before him. But we don't see what's in it. And the face of, of Adam speaks volumes. And uh, we switch to this place, Barnes, Saskatchewan. I don't know where it is. I mean, I mean the heartland of the great North American prairie. Okay, so this is some kind of a small city, village. Um, then, out of nowhere, Crucifer and his followers come and they're going to enslave the whole town or village um, because he has plans. What this plans is, I don't know yet. So skipping a few pages so here. Um, oh, by the way, I'm going to show you this. I mean, I love that. Look at this Crucifer face. We see him a little bit more and more in his true form. Uh, I like that a lot. Um, who is the artist? Is it, is it now? Wait a minute. Is it Jerry Ordway who is the artist? Or let me see. John Byrne and Chris Claremont with Jerry Ordway. So this is a mix, a collaboration, because I see a lot of John Byrne and uh, Jerry Ordway's art in here. Sometimes I, I have trouble to. Uh, to get to uh, distinguish these two. Um, what was I saying? I lost my train of thought. Yes, okay. Um, Batman is in Batcave, uh, is doing, well, Batman stuff. He's doing his detective stuff. He uh, wants to know more about the Ten Circle, but also uh, about those weird uh, group of people that helped them before. You know, and he studies the residue of Green Lantern suits and he sees uh, or he, well, notice that um, it's a mix of limestone and cobalt or coral, coral unique to one of the hemisphere. And that leads them to Key Mordas, Florida. And then we switch to uh, our friends from the Doomsday Patrol. Uh, did I spoil that or did I mention that in the last video? I don't know. But, uh, you know, I, I just said it. Uh, I think this whole scene with the Doomsday Patrol is a little bit boring. It's it's very slow. They argue a lot. There's a lot of talking. And they want to do with something with the Ten Circle, but they just sit around and argue and talking. Um, yeah, I um, I don't like this part at all. Um and I'm, I'm also a, never been a big fan of the leader of the of the of the Doomsday Patrol. He's also very narcissistic, always negative. Uh, he's not supported at all. He's always arguing with the with these people. I mean, I don't know much about the Doom Patrol, but it seems like he's a very unlikable character. I could be wrong. Uh, anyway, so skipping a few pages. Well, Notch here um, wants to try to appeal to Superman, but Superman is battling in his mind. The thrall uh, against the thrall of well, his enslavement, his in, you know, um, always being hypnotized, always being held against his will. But he cannot move at all. He doesn't talk, and Nudge try to appeal to him. But then, out of nowhere, Vortex comes, and Vortex wants to help Nudge to uh, to help her to uh, you know do whatever they have to do, whatever that is. It seems that they want to escape uh, the Castle Crucifer, but Vortex is also a teleporter, so. They're going to use his powers to get out of here, but they are teleporting themselves to this place. Not sure why, uh, because he wants to have her friend called Grunt. Grunt is that ape with four arms. And uh, they take them with them to the to this place. Uh, I don't know what's, ha what's going to happen, but I believe Grunt was... Yeah, Grunt was held against his will by the Doom Patrol. Uh, there's reasons for that. Uh, I explained a little bit in the last issue. So you check that out. Um, so maybe that's the reason why they go back. I'm not entirely sure. Um, but then, Crucifer uh, has, you know, doing something like this. I don't know. He's marked his, his presence or something like that. And then um, 
shouting that they are gonna, I don't know, take over the world or something like that. I, I love this, this, this facial expression, really cool. Uh, anyway, so yeah, this is probably uh, some kind of a power power play, not sure why, it's just an X burning, but hey, comics, right? Anyway, so we see them here, what I talked about with Nudge and Vortex and, and, and Nudge or Grunt. Yeah, Grunt. And uh, so they're here. Um, the Doom Patrol noticed that they are here, but at the same time, the Justice League found them as well. And uh, yeah, we see what happens next time. Um, yeah, it's a little bit slow. I'm not really enjoying this issue. There are some, some I love the layers in here that there's different storylines um, flowing between each other, but not every storyline works. Like I mentioned before, I don't know the whole thing with uh, Manitou Raven and, and the Atom, um, the whole Nudge uh, Vortex Grunt thing doesn't pull me in either. And the Doom Patrol is not very active and interesting here. So what le is left is, you know, Superman, Wonder Woman, Justice League against Crucifer. That's, for me, the most, in, 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 you know, interesting part of this comic. So, yeah, hmm, it's an okay book. Not, not spectacular, but it moves the story a little bit forward. So let's see what happens. Two issues to go uh, to see the conclusion of the 10th circle. So stay tuned for, uh, for that, uh, guys and girls. So thank you for watch. Thank you for watching and sticking uh, here with me so far. Um, yeah, have a nice Sunday. I see you next time.